Welcome to the Investing Podcast presented by Tusk Media. This is Outsider Trading, an audio and video deep dive into the people, places, and things that we find most interesting in the market. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Investing Podcast. Quick programming note, we are doing things a little bit differently this week. I'm Andrew Hall. I'm still joined by Ben Nye. Ben, how are you? I'm doing well. Good, good. So rather than do a bunch of market overviews, uh, we are going to focus on individual stocks and their earnings reports for a couple reasons. Number one, it's earnings season, so everybody's favorite time of the quarter. And number two, we're going to be out of town a good bit, so we're going to be at the Invest for Kids conference in Chicago in the middle of this week. So follow us on Twitter at Tusk Media LLC. We're going to give some live updates from our adventures there, investing and otherwise. But in the meantime, we're going to update you guys on some of our perspectives on earnings, some previews, some reactions. We're going to talk about you know, everything from Boeing to CCMP, which we're about to dive into, all the way to Twitter and a recap of Polaris and a bunch of other stocks. So make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube, hit subscribe on iTunes if you're there. Uh, and if you're on Seeking Alpha, give us a follow. That way you see all our stuff when it comes up. But we're going to jump in right now with Cabot microelectronics right. and we're going to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart slurry yeah i think i think that was a new vocab word for the yes. office slurry and uh first question i think everybody's going to want to know is what on earth is slurry right so cabinet microelectronics was spun off from cabinet industries in the early 2000s and cabinet micro what they do is very simple business. They basically have two products. Um, there's some variations on that product, but the two primary products are slurry and pads. And um, so slurry, so we're talking about a tech stock, first and foremost. Yeah. Um, this company is, and we have a diagram on the screen there from uh, the presentation that they have. A slurry goes on when, the, when they're building a chip, when they're manufacturing a computer chip, the slurry goes on that kind of, it's a, it's a chemical formula that essentially smooths out the surface of the chip so that there aren't any, you know, because if, if you have a error in the manufacturing mm -hmm. the chip, I mean, the chip just doesn't done. work. Mm -hmm. And it, this happens at the microscopic level. Um, so the chemical formula smooths out at a micro, on a micro basis, the surface of the chip, mm -hmm. and you put the you put that on a pad, and you know, also sells the pad. So what this what the track is attractive to about this business is that it does have a fairly large moat. First of all, there aren't many competitors in it. Mm -hmm. um, the competitors that do exist have been historically uh, people as part of larger companies. Mm -hmm. So you have the Dow uh, pad business, which is the leader in pads. CCMP is number two in pads and the leader in slurry. And then you have uh, Air Products, most recent spinoff. Um, this is Versum, ticker is VSM, and they do slurry as well, and they're a competitor of Cabot Microelectronics. They were part of Air Products for the longest time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very consolidated industry high gross margin business. I mean, this is a company that does about 50% gross margins. Wow. So when, when if you're trying to evaluate, you know, what is the economic moat in this business, a lot of the kind of my heuristic that I use is, well, what is the gross margin? So we've seen with some stocks that say we have a tremendous technology advantage, um, you know, but then you look at the gross margin and then you see like 18, 15% yeah. gross margin like, you know, this, this is a commodity business. This is not a high margin, high economic business. Not the case with CCMP. Um, so they report on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I'm extremely excited about this report because it is so such an underfollowed company that people really haven't updated their price targets or earnings estimates for about a quarter. Um, <laughs> however, in the meantime, you've had many, many, many positive data points with right. good news, especially this earnings season. So first of all, Intel comes out. So the biggest driver for CCMP, taking a step back, is wafer starts. And you can get this data from Taiwan Semiconductor, you can get this data from a number of third-party sources, 
and we'll put up a chart on it too. Um, and so you, you see an extremely tight correlation between CCMP and its revenue and the number of waiver starts. Mm -hmm. um, and we have had a number of good data points on that. So first of all, Intel comes out, guides up for the quarter. That's really good news. Um, the guidance, they recently reported earnings officially, and guidance was somewhat muted, but mm -hmm. I mean, they still had an excellent, excellent quarter. CCMP earnings estimates did not move. <laughs> um, KLA Tenacore came out, they reported earnings. I got, again, great earnings report. You can look at their stock, the stock went up, revenue beat, and CCMP's earnings estimates did not change. <laughs> uh, Microsoft, same story. Uh, LAM Research, a great one to look at if you're looking for a read through to CCMP. They came out with earnings. And they said, you know, the market is just extremely strong. Th things are really moving in 3D NAND. Mm -hmm. And you can look at Micron if you want mm -hmm. more proof of that. And that is where the slurry really comes into effect because at that point in time, you're dealing with so much, you need so much more slurry. Mm -hmm. And the cost of failure is so much higher um, that you want someone that you can really count on. If you are a Foundry customer for CCMP or one of its mm -hmm. competitors, mm -hmm. Are you going to go with somebody who charges a point nine of a penny or someone who charges one penny just because the person who charges point nine of a penny is cheaper? You're going to go with the person who can produce the product because the right. cost of failure, you, you really want to lower that failure rate so that you can deliver the product and that your boss isn't going to come to you and say, you know, you went all out to save point one of a penny on a chip and now look at the right. problems we're having. Phones are blowing up. Right. <laughs> uh, that's not the reason Samsung's phones are blown up. Just <laughs> to be clear, but it could happen. But it could happen. Um, so ha having the right product when it's a small mm -hmm. portion of the cost of manufacturing the product is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that Cabot has such a good gross margin. Um, and also such good market share. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about 40% market share, I mean, this is, this is a good business. Um, extremely underfollowed company that earnings estimates do not change, as we said. Uh, you can talk to the investor relations representatives and, you know, that they're looking to increase the following as well. Uh, thinly traded stock, so be on the lookout for that. If they do beat numbers handily, you can see the price rise quite substantially. Conversely, if they do miss, um, that would be very surprising to me given what we're seeing from everyone else yeah but if they do miss that would have a very negative impact on the stock mm -hmm. so right now that street estimate is 71 cents a share uh, on 114.5 million dollars in revenue and 49.5 percent gross margin i think you could see the revenue quite a bit higher than that and I think as the revenue increases, I think you see gross margin increases as well, because you have that scale. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see earnings beat by even more than you might expect. Right. Um, so keep an eye out on that. That is slurry, that CCMP. And we are along the stock. Yes. And we are, I, at least I'm really excited about this. Yeah, before. absolutely. And again, it's kind of one of those, those niche industries, but you know, kind of an interesting way to play chips as well, right. you know, kind of. Yeah, it's almost a, a diversified play on chips as a whole. Right. Um, so kind of an interesting perspective because when you start to look at how big some of those companies are and deciding, oh, well, do I want to go and tie myself to Intel or this company or that company, right. at the end of the day, you've got a company here that's having a hand in basically 40% of the volume. Right. It's a volume play. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, we are along the stock. We're going to be back with more previews. Other companies coming your way. We touched on some of those already. So make sure you hit subscribe wherever you're at. And uh, we will talk to you all soon. Tusk Media is a subsidiary of Narwhal Capital Management. Ratings and reviews of Tusk Media content are not to be construed as endorsements of opinions, analysis, or services offered by Tusk or its parent company. The opinions and predictions shared here are our professional beliefs at the time of publication. We are not under duress from any of the corporate entities mentioned. This is not a solicitation to take any particular action. Although we are investment advisors, this information should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. We strive to be as impartial, insightful, and accurate as possible. We base our opinions, analysis, and calculations on information we believe to be reliable, but we cannot guarantee its accuracy. We can, however, guarantee that our opinions will sometimes be flat out wrong due to a variety of factors. Employees and clients of Narwhal Capital Management may or may not hold positions in the securities detailed and may or may not hold these positions in the future. A 
full list of all securities purchased, sold, or held during the 12 months preceding the date of this publication can be provided upon request. Unless otherwise noted, all data accessed via MarketWatch or the Bloomberg Terminal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. A copy of Narwhal's form ADV is available at the SEC's website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov, or from Narwhal upon written request.